welcome to Escape Adventures with Robin and Steve. Today we're escaping in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to be making a chocolate malt milk bar cake today. Uh, this is for the escape from keto day, which has definitely been declared. Um, Steve's birthday was Thursday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my birthday is coming up uh, in May, so we're celebrating today. So I'm going to be making this delicious cake to celebrate our birthdays and we're going to enjoy it and I'm going to make it here for you so you can see how to make it too. So welcome to my kitchen and let's escape together. Come along with us. So I've set up my stand mixer and I have my attachments that I'm going to need. I have my measuring cups and spoons and I have my mise en place done. Everything has been measured with grams. Um, definitely I'll be linking to her recipe, the lady who does this. Um, we'll be linking to her recipe so that um, you can make this too if you want to. So this is all the pre-measured ingredients and we're just simply going to combine them in the proper order. And let's do that now. I'm gonna start with the first part of the recipe, which is to combine the butter and sugar in a stand mixer or with a hand mixer if you have that. So let's do that first. Okay, so the first step is to combine the butter and sugars in the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment and cream together on medium high for two to three minutes. So let's get the butter and sugars in. Here's the first sugar, which is white sugar. That is in. We have brown sugar. That is in, and we have the butter. And just scraping it in, doesn't matter, and it should be room temperature butter. Yeah. We cream together on medium high for two to three minutes. Butters and sugars are mixing together and binding to each other. So now we have uh, let this mix for two to three minutes, and we're gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl. So we've scraped the sides of the bowl and now add the eggs. Bowl, three large size eggs and we are going to put them in. There's the eggs in the batter. Okay, so now we're going to mix on medium high for two to three minutes. Medium high. You can see the way they're incorporating in. The still is not completely incorporated. You want that too full two to three minutes to pass, but then we're going to scrape down the sides of the bowl. So the next step is to mix the buttermilk in, and we're going to stream in the buttermilk, oil, and vanilla. And that's the buttermilk, the oil, which is grape seed oil, and vanilla. That's Mexican vanilla. So on low speed, we're going to stream in the buttermilk. Okay, we're going to check this. We've hit the six minute mark. Okay, so we are scraping down the sides of the bowl. We have all of that scraped. And now we are going to follow the next step. On low speed, add the cake, flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, and salt. Mix for 45 to 60 seconds just until your batter comes together and any remnants of dry ingredients have been incorporated. Scrape down the sides of the bowl. Cake flour first. Cocoa powder. I'm using Giardelli's cocoa powder. Baking powder. And it calls for kosher salt. That is all in. And now we mix for 45 to 60 seconds. On low, it's, I feel very impatient. I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl here while we're going. It's always good, good to give it a little scrape, but watch your paddle. Don't let it take your hand off. Especially if you're using a hand, uh, one of these, um, especially if you're using a KitchenAid mixer, but I love my KitchenAid. So now we've scraped down the sides of the bowl, and the next step is to spread the cake using a spatula, and we're going to spread this cake batter in an even layer in the pan. Okay, so here we go. We're going to lay out the cake in the pan. It's already prepared. It's got its parchment with Pam underneath, 
and it's nice and bent to that right for now. So let's spread it out in an even layer. Okay, so we have the cake all spread evenly in the pan and we are gonna go in the oven and we have tapped it on the counter to even it out and it is good and even, so in the oven it goes. In the oven it goes. Okay, so the timer's going off and here is the cake, it looks good. Done. So there we go. It is all done. We are pulling it from the oven. So now the cake has been pulled out of the oven. It is uh, sitting on the counter to cool. And I have my mise en place ready for my malt fudge sauce. This is part of the cake. And it is all ready to go. We have some chocolate uh, chopped. 60 grams. We have 80 grams of Ovaltine malt flavoring. And that is your Classic Ovaltine, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and we have five grams of molasses, one gram of kosher salt, 200 grams of glucose, that's right here. This is uh, corn syrup, <laughs> that is glucose. Uh, 50 grams of granulated sugar, and 110 grams of heavy cream, and it is cold. So we're gonna now make this malt fudge sauce, and here we go. So we're gonna pour the chocolate Ovaltine and salt in the medium bowl, so here we go. There's the chocolate, and that is chocolate I bought in Honduras, so it's a nice 72% uh, chocolate. We have the Ovaltine in the Hulk bowl, yay Hulk bowl. So we're gonna pour that in. All in. We are going to pour in the salt, one gram of salt. Step number two takes place on the stove. So we're gonna go ahead and get that set up as well right now. This is gonna take place in this bowl, so we're gonna set this bowl up. So we have our heavy saucepan. We are gonna be combining the glucose, molasses, sugar, and heavy cream in this heavy bottom saucepan. There goes the glucose. Okay. And then we are going to put in the molasses, sugar, and heavy cream. Okay, here we are at the stove with our uh, heavy saucepan, and we are gonna stir this intermittently until it becomes uh, to a boil, so intermittently. Uh-oh, okay. It's about to come to a boil here. Okay. Is it start, you see a bubble? You see it starting to bubble? The minute it comes to a boil. Okay, take it off the heat. Okay, we're off the heat. We're almost, the moment it boils, we're pouring it into the holding chocolate. We're pouring it into the chocolate mis mixture and it's gonna sit for one minute. So now we are waiting one full minute so the chocolate will meld with the sugar sauce that we just put in with heavy cream, the saucepan ingredients. We put that in the bowl and we are waiting this one full minute so that we can uh, start slowly whisking and bring it to a fluff. So the chocolate malt frosting is now in the fridge. It can be stored up to two weeks in the refrigerator, but do not freeze it. 
So that's done, now on to step three. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the chocolate malt frosting. I have mise en place the ingredients, so they're all ready to go. We have um, three sticks plus one tablespoon of butter. It's supposed to be unsalted, I only have salted. So I'm gonna cut the salt in here by one third, which would leave us with six grams of kosher salt. And then we also have 33 grams of cocoa powder. We have 33 grams of Ovaltine. We have 78 grams of whole milk. That's just in the bowl there. And then we have three cups, 498 grams of powdered sugar. It's in this bowl here, which, okay. So now we're gonna make frosting, <laughs> chocolate malt frosting. Here we go. So we're gonna combine the first set of ingredients. First is the butter. Good. So then we have the powdered sugar. We're gonna get that all in there. It's a lot harder to do with one hand. Okay, so now we have the powdered sugar in the bowl and we're now gonna add the salt. And I did cut it by one third for the fact I'm using salted butter. We put in the cocoa powder and the Ovaltine. That's the cocoa powder. There's the Ovaltine. Okay, so now we're gonna mix. We're gonna mix this ingredient for five to seven minutes on medium high with this paddle attachment. So we're gonna lift up the bowl and turn it on medium high. Slowly, whoa, not that fast. Slowly. Once the butter kind of spreads out a little, it'll be less powdery. Maybe a little higher, there we go, medium high. We're gonna mix this for five to seven minutes. Be right back. So now we're at medium high for about three or four minutes or so. It's five to seven, so we're getting light and fluffy. We're gonna stop in just a few moments and uh, scrape down the sides of the bowl. Okay, so that is uh, finished mixing. Now on to the next thing, which is, with the mixer on its lowest speed stream in the milk, crank the mixer up to medium high and beat for two to three minutes until the mixture is silky, smooth, and glossy. And a glossy, it says, but uh, is that and a glossy, I guess. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna stream in the milk. Let's do that on low. Got it on low. Okay, and there it is. The milk is streamed in. It's mixing now. Let's some white stuff. I'm gonna stop it and scrape down the mixer if I need to. It's getting nice and fluffy. And we're going to be throwing this down airtight container. So we've got one more minute and then I will bring it to you. So we're going to scrape down the sides of the bowl and use frosting immediately or store it in an airtight tight container in a fridge for up to a week. Now we're going to store this in this airtight container. Okay, that's pretty good frosting. So <laughs> uh, Steve just tried it and he said it was amazing. It tastes like a malted milk ball. Mm -hmm. A little on the edge and airtight container one week in the fridge. So I'm gonna be making the malt crumb next. And this is what you make with the um, Whoppers or more Ovaltine and more Ovaltine. <laughs> I need to work those in there somewhere because I want actual Whoppers in this uh, cake. I'll figure out where to put them, but I don't want people getting too many surprises because I want it to be moist. Okay, so right now the frosting is in the fridge, the fudge sauce is in the fridge, the cake is still cooling and is now cool on the counter. So the next step is to make malt crumb. Um, we are gonna go ahead and do that in just a second, but I'm gonna get the mise en place ready so it's easy just for uh, you to see it go in. We'll be right back and you'll be seeing that in a blink of an eye. See, we're back. It was that fast for you, but it was about half an hour for me. So I'm gonna do a little bit more here. I'm gonna make the malt crunch. We've got it all mise en place. Everything's ready to go, so. Let's do it. Okay, here we are back with our mise en place prepared for the malt crunch topping. 
and we have our ingredients all laid out, a few extras up there, but it's all measured, ready to go. You'll find that in the recipe linked. Um, we are gonna start this process now. So the first dose, there's two different sizes of milk powder, two different sizes of Ovaltine. They're for two different steps. So we're gonna start with the larger milk powder. Right here, it's just dry milk powder. I'm gonna put that in the bowl. And we're gonna use the cornstarch right here in the bowl. We're gonna put in the flour. Hey, whoops. <laughs> okay, we just put in the flour and now we're gonna put in the Ovaltine right here. There it is. Stacking my bowls. All right, so we have the Ovaltine in, and then the salt. Oh, the salt is stuck in the bowl a little. It's very humid in here. Okay, and then we have the sugar. It's just a little sugar. That's a lot of sugar for me. <laughs> but the sugar goes in nonetheless. Okay, so we have all those ingredients in. Then the next Direction is to toss with your hands to mix. Okay, here we go. We're tossing this mixture with our hands to mix, then we're trying to get any lumps out. And the next step is to add the melted butter and toss using this spatula until the mixture starts to come together and form small clusters. So let's drizzle some butter in. We're mixing it around. Whoops, I'm dribbling it on the table. We have a little extra, so no problem. I'm dribbling it. It's kind of spinning around, but I'm just going with the flow. Okay, a little more. <laughs> Okay, keep stirring. I'm gonna put down the butter for a brief second. Give it a good, honest grab toss, and the little balls are forming. Form small clusters. Okay, we're pouring more in. All the butter is in, and now a final toss to form the little clusters. Tiny clusters. I see little clusters. Looks like little clusters in the this all here. We got one more little turn. Oh, uh, so decisions on the fly. It's all cooking. Okay, we have our small balls. Now we're going to spread the clusters on the parchment paper or silk pat lined sheet. This is it right here. And we're just going to spread. And then we'll use a little slidey technique. Get them to spread out. It's kind of everywhere, but there's big ones and small ones. Okay, little shape. Now into the oven they go. Okay, so we've got those in the oven and now we are gonna clean up our mess and get ready for the chocolate milk. Now these crumbles are baked and we're about to start adding chocolate and other yummy things to them. Here are some roughly chopped melted milk balls. Um, there's, uh, they're mostly in pieces. There's one that's a half. Oops, we'll just eat that. But <laughs> melted milk ball, uh, this is something I'm adding to the recipe. Okay, we have our small ingredients here, the crumble in the bowl, and we're gonna be mixing it with the Ovaltine powder, smaller portion, and the milk powder, smaller portion that we measured earlier. So we're gonna make this in. Then we're gonna use our hands to toss it. We're gonna to toss it uh, so that they're coated in these powders. It's evenly distributed, that's what the goal is. Here is our coated crumble mixture now mixed by hand. We've got it all good and it is coated, so now we're gonna melt the white chocolate to pour over this. So here's, here's our chocolate in a microwave bowl. It's just a bar chocolate, it's been measured and weighed. 
and we're going to melt it in 30 second intervals in the microwave. So 30 seconds, I have a 30 second button, whoops, clear first, 30 seconds express, and we're going to melt this chocolate. So you can see our 30 seconds of chocolate melting in the microwave is created definitely in melt. And now we're going to stir it up and watch that pan because mine was quite warm. <laughs> it says to use a spatula. Okay, I can see it's not quite there yet. So we're just going to put it back in for another 30 seconds. As you can see now our white chocolate is melted and we're just scraping down the sides of the bowl. You need to work with this kind of quickly because it will solidify, but my bowl is kind of warm, so that is a good thing. All the chocolate is now melted, and we are going to pour this over the mixture. And now we're tossing the chocolate with the crumble, and we're coating it completely. It is fully enrobed. Now we're going to wait five minutes, set five on the timer, and then we will toss again in five minutes. This is also where I'm going to add our malted milk ball that I am adding to this mixture because I want it to be enrobed in the chocolate as well. So we're going to add that and we're going to give it another quick toss. And I need both hands for this. So we're just going to toss that in. So now I've tossed it in and this is going to sit for five minutes more. And then we're going to toss it again until the white chocolate hardens and the clusters are no longer sticky. So we have prepared our pan for the marshmallows and we are going to also be making the Ovaltine soak. We're going to do that for you now. Okay, marshmallow is prepared and we are about to go into the broiler. I have it set to high and we are going to watch these like a hawk. So you can see the marshmallows are browning nicely, but I want them to be a little browner. So I pulled them out and they are browned. Nicely on top. We're just gonna let those cool and we're gonna remember to turn the oven off because I never remember All right, so I chose to pull them off of the pan and leave them on the parchment to cool I don't want them to melt more and the pan is still hot. So Definitely just pulled the parchment straight off onto the countertop Okay, so now we have our marshmallows. They're nice and cooled down uh, they are stuck to the parchment a little bit, but we're going to deal with that in a sec. Okay, so now we have prepared our cake ring. This recipe calls for a six inch cake ring, and this is a cake ring. <laughs> Apparently you can adjust it to be whatever size you want, and then you line it with the acetate, which uh, gives you the ability to build taller. Um, it says to use two three inch strips. Mine came in a six inch width. So um, I'm using two because basically they want you to use one, then pull out one so that it's clean and looks pretty with the other one. So we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna do use two. Also need to set my ring to six inches because I was thinking in my mind this cake would be larger, but it's not, but that's perfectly fine because it's just the two of us, so we don't need a ton of cake. We have the cake ring and the acetate ready to assemble the cake, and that's what we're about to do is start assembling. Okay, so this step is where we cut the cake, the sheet flat cake, into rings. So I have uh, the ability to get one, two, three, four, five, six rings. Now these ones over here are gonna have a funny edge, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the scraps to stuff that uh, piece that's not there, so. Okay, so we have to flip the cake first. <laughs> so it has parchment on the bottom. It says to take the cake and flip it over on a silk pad. That's what we just did. <laughs> should come right off. It did. So then we peel back the parchment paper. And there's the cake. Okay, so we have our cake on the sill pat and we are gonna go ahead and cut those rings. Six inch. And we're gonna go with the first one. And these are gonna be a little 
little smaller than I anticipated, but you're actually only supposed to have to cut three rings, but my cake is kind of thin, and um, I'm just using the material that I can. These aren't full circles, but we'll be filling it in with these scraps. And we want to do that not on the top layer, but on the, one of the middle layers so that you can't really see that. Okay, so we are going to pull our rings. See, these are a bit flat, so I'm going to be using them in doubles. I'm just going to put them in together because I think that's the way it was supposed to come out. Okay, so we had a slight day of delay of game while I was getting the frosting back to a smooth consistency, which we did by microwaving one third of it for about seven seconds and then adding that back to the mixer and remixing it with the colder material and it fluffed right back up. So now we're set to assemble and we're gonna start that now. Okay, now here we go with the assembly. So I'm gonna start here with the bottom layer and the first is to use the ugliest circles that you have. Now I am going to be putting the first circle in here and I'm just doing this on a paper plate because it'll be easier to clean up. And then I'll transfer it after it's frozen. So we're gonna take some scraps and fill in the gap there. And I'm just trying to kind of peel them to the right size, best that I can. You can push them down. And fill them right in. using a little stiffer piece on the side just so it'll hold up a little bit more. You can be a little firm with it, just press it down. Got one little more gap over there. Okay. I've never actually used a cake ring before, so this is kind of new, but now, my layers came out a little thin, so I'm doing two pieces of cake for each layer because I had enough with my pan that I used. Next time I would probably use a bit, um, little bit different of a size of a pan, but uh, this is a big production, so <sighs> it won't be every day that I'm making this. <laughs> well, and also it's full of sugar. Pressing in that second layer for my first layer. So layer B, 1B, <laughs> going in. Okay, so that's in, I feel good about that. And yeah, it looks good and covered, it's nice and flat. So use your fist to press it down. Use your fist. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Got that. Now on to the next step of the layer. So, It wants us next to do the soap. So we're gonna dunk our pastry brush, and this is what I've got, so. <laughs> um, we're gonna dunk the pastry brush in the soap, and it says give the layer of cake a good healthy bath of half of the soap. So it's about a quarter cup in here, so half the soap. Well, let's give it a bath. So we're brushing this cake soak in. We're dousing the brush and painting it on. It's soaking right up says to use half of the mixture. So we're gonna be soaking for a minute here. Definitely, you can see it when it's going in and then it kind of disappears in. It's definitely soaking. Soak, soak, soak. And um, I'm going to be pulling out this ring. When we did the ring of acetate, we did a double ring. So I've got an inside and I've got an outside. So when I'm done with the messy parts, I can pull up the ring and it will be the clean one on the outside. Okay, we're still soaking the cake. It says you use half of this. My gosh, I feel like it's a lot. We are getting down to that second layer as well though, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. <laughs> Maybe next time I would do the, if I'm doing two layers, part A and B, I would um, do the soak on the first layer first, then the second layer. But we're going to let that soak up. 
Okay, next layer is going to be the malt fudge sauce. And the next step is the malt fudge sauce. This fudge sauce is just amazing. I stuck this in the microwave for about 30 seconds, not even 30, maybe 15. And it stirred right up into a beautiful fudge sauce and it stayed consistent. It's just amazing consistency. Look at that. <laughs> you take uh, using the back of the spoon spread one third the malt fudge sauce one third wow okay so let's figure out about what one third is just gonna put it in come close try to get in over the top like you want to look down could be using another brush for this it says use the back of the spoon, so I'm using the back of the spoon. Another layer. Drizzle it around. Trying to get it to the edges. Even, I think, is important. One more spoonful, I think, will be a third. This is the bottom layer, so you want to be able to see that layer of fudge. One might take out the rings. Okay. Looks even. Good, I'm happy with that. Okay. Now, the next layer. One third of the malted milk crumbs over one third of the charred and one third of the charred marshmallows evenly over the malt fudge sauce. So, one third of these. These are the malted milk crumbs. I'm gonna actually leave some of the bigger chunks aside and go for the smaller. A handful. <laughs> and we'll sprinkle it in. Sprinkling it in over the top. Whoops, I missed. <laughs> One more handful from the side of the bowl to not get all the big chunks. I'm trying to figure out how to spread that around. Guess getting it in there is the first step. I'm just moving it around a little in the pan, just moving it into place, kind of tamping it down a little. I'd say maybe just a hair more, it'll be a third. Okay. So we've got that first layer in, take a look at that. Okay, now the next layer. Charred marshmallows. So we have our charred marshmallows right here. I charred them and then I put them in the parchment in the freezer so they'd be a little easier to handle. So I'm just gonna use this ringer to kinda chop sections. I think it might make it easier, but maybe not. Oop, they're a little stuck to the parchment. This is a thing, but we're gonna just kinda grab them off and we're gonna put a layer of them in there. This is a very messy process. <laughs> very messy, messy. So I'm gonna wash my hands. So the next step is to put a layer of the malt frosting over the charred marshmallows. Now, this could get a bit tricky, so the malt frosting is still nice and pliable. I'm just gonna take a big blop and put it in the middle and kind of spread it from there. One third, one third. It's always a third. Okay, blop. Come on, close. Blop in the middle, and then we're just gonna kinda spread it out. Wow, that's a little difficult. We're spreading, we're spreading. Whoops, let me get this excess so I have mm -hmm. <laughs> more to spread. Oh, and as I said before, Steve and I are the only people eating this cake, so uh, I'm using my fingers <laughs> as I please. <laughs> okay. Where, I guess a little more. Okay. So, next step. Next step is to layer the middle. So we put in another layer. <laughs> Here comes another layer of cake. 
All right, so we're just gonna put this in there. And there's the second one that I'm particularly using. Oh, and we were gonna do a little of the wash on the layer first before we add the second layer. We didn't do that on the first one. We figured it'll get down there. The rounds are all nice and yeah, third, they came out a little thinner than I would have expected. Okay, and we're using our fist to push it down. It said to do that. We're gonna soak this layer with the malt soak. The fudge sauce. So we have one, half of this basically now. Right in, look at that. Okay. It's getting messy in my kitchen, folks, yes. This is a messy thing, but we'll clean it up at the end. Oh, and the cake is coming up a little in the malt sauce, but that's fine because it isn't gonna show. Okay. All right, next, we're gonna do the next layer of malt crumble. Okay, good. Now the marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> It'll fill it in. Okay, now the layer of the malt frosting. And we're wanting to use half of this because it calls for a third for each layer. So about half of what's here. And now that we're at the acetate level. Okay, so hold the cake ring tight when pressing you are down. pressing it down. Kind of using my whole hand. Okay. All right, that's the last layer of cake. Now we do the soak. So it should just soak right through. I'm going to get this done. All right. Soak achieved. Okay, good. We're done with that. Fudge sauce. Okay, so now we're gonna do our last layer of fudge sauce. We're gonna get all the sauce out of here and we're gonna pour it right on. Get it all in there. It's going in the freezer, so it can be thick. Just getting as much coverage as we can. We can use that. Whoa, not that part. This no, not the edge of the acetate. <laughs> More finger looking good. Okay. Tis finished, tis layered, tis acetated, tis everything. Okay, so the cake is in the freezer. It's been in here for about an hour and a half and it's um, feeling very cold. So hour and a half in, that's pretty chill. And as a good cook, I have the kitchen clean after my cooking spree. I even mopped the floor. <laughs> But uh, it's now ready for the next project, whatever that may be. Yucky stuff on it. And now you can actually present with the clean layer. Yeah. Now we're gonna remove this second layer of acetate. Well, here it comes, the big reveal. 
pulling away that acetate and it is revealing a beautiful, delicious milk bar cake uh, from the bottom up. Amazing. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for everybody for joining us today and please tune in next week for another escape adventure with Robin and Steve. Take care.